Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Blake Lucchese. I'm a partner at This By Them and I do a lot of Drupal development work. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about uh, Views 2 and how to theme your views. Uh, today I'll be doing examples uh, off of the campsite just because a lot of you guys have, have interacted and seen it. Uh, so I wanted to kind of go into some of the code after I do some introduction um, so that you guys can see some examples. So the modules and tools I'll be using for today are the admin menu, which you'll see across the top of the screen, uh, the devel module, and that's for uh, debugging in the code, so uh, printing variables and uh, looking at queries, um, CCK image field image cache, we're all used as part of the site, so yeah, can, can you not hear it? It's too low. Is, that, is that better? Okay, so the modules and the tools for uh, we'll be using today are the admin menu, the devel menu, or devel module, so we can debug the variables uh, as the code gets executed. CCK, image field, image cache, and views are all used to put together the node types and the, obviously the views that we're going to be theming. And I'll be using Mozilla Firefox with the Firebug extension or the plugin uh, to step through and look at some of the HTML markup that comes out of, uh, comes out of the views. Uh, so Drupal has a templating system. Uh, who here has worked with any of the, the templates listed there? Or the page.tpl.php, give it, raise your hand. So I, okay. Uh, so I take you guys are pretty savvy. You guys know what template files are, so I kind of can dig in a little further. If you guys have questions along the way, I go too fast, uh, stop me and uh, ask questions. So the Drupal template system, there's node.tpl.php, there's block.tpl.php, there's a few others. But the views module provides a number of templates, and uh, they all start with the views, uh, views-view, or uh, as you'll see a little more. Uh, the views templates, there's, there's four types of templates that views puts out. There's a display output, which is the main wrapper for the view. And in that template, you have the view header, the view footer, the pager, the content, and any attachments. Uh, it also has put out, out, outputs a title if you have one. The style output, uh, and you'll see here, you have table, unformatted, grid. Uh, those are all different styles that you, uh, that you can use to output the, the content. So that, that goes in a little bit deeper and that gets you closer to the content that Views is putting out. Um, you can actually extend Views with your own modules to provide your own unique style outputs if you want to. Uh, digging in a little bit deeper, we get into the row style output. And what that does is, as you loop through each of your results, it'll call this theme function to theme all the fields within that particular result. Okay, and then going in one bit further, you have the field template, which for every field uh, that you have in your view, it calls the, the, the template file for that. Okay. Uh, so if you go to views and you click on the little theming um, button at the bottom uh, of the, the, th the view settings, it'll output a bunch of uh, bunch of text and show you, hey, these are, these are the possible templates that you can use for this view. And um, you know, WTF. <laughs> Where do I go from here? Um, so as I said before, it gives you a list of all the available template names. Uh, the reason it does this is for template inheritance. And I'll go through some examples. But basically, it starts out with the most generic template that you can use. And that's defined by the views module itself. And it'll go down to be a specific as uh, the view, it's the actual view, or the actual view plus the actual display. So uh, how many people understand the difference between a view and a display? Okay, so I'll explain a little bit. So what a display is, is when you create a view in Drupal 6 with views 2, you create a view and then you create a number of different displays for that view. Okay, so when you add a block, a block display or a page display, those are all unique displays uh, for that view. So in this instance, you can actually have uh, different themes. Say you have five, five block displays for one view. You can actually theme each of those blocks differently uh, using this template system because it allows you to uh, get so specific. Uh, so walking through this as an example, the views module defines views-view-unformatted.tpl.php. If you wanted to implement that on your own theme, any unformatted display style will use your template instead of that one. Okay, and then as you dig in a little further, this particular view is called sessions. So it allows you to define 
the way that the uh, unformatted style shows up for any of the, the displays in the session view. Okay, you get a little more specific, and you see at the bottom here, I you know the, we have the option to override the template, the unformatted template for the sessions view, the block display, and the actual block display number. So if we had five different blocks, this would be overriding the, the block one display. Okay. The uh, important thing to note too, the, the double hashes, the double dashes there define where a variable is going in. So you'll see that some at some parts there is a single dash and some there's double dashes. The double dashes um, are what separates the variables that are being used. Okay, is there any questions about what I've kind of gone over so far? What variable? What variable? Okay, good question. So views, just like any other module, has its own variables. And what it'll do is it'll substitute those variables in to look for different templates. So in this case, you have, uh, you have unformatted would be a variable. It's the display style. You have block, which is, or the, sorry, that's the, um, the output style. It's unformatted. So that would be either unformatted, grid, table, okay? And then you have block, which is the display type. Okay, so block would be either, either be block or page, um, could be an attachment as well. Um, and then one would be the delta. So that would be this is block one or block two or block three. So we can never use the real name, we always use this the delta. Um, of the display? Yeah. Correct, yeah. That's important to know too. The question is you never use the real name of the display, you use the delta. And uh, the answer is yes, you actually use um, it, it always starts at one, so the first block display you create is block underscore one. All right, the second block you create is block underscore two. <coughs> the same thing for the page displays. So if you have three or four page displays, the first one is uh, page underscore one. And uh, the cool thing about this is when you click on the theming little uh, link, it'll actually show you for, for the display that you're looking at all the template names you can use. So you don't actually have to dig in and find out what display is this or stuff like that. Okay, does that make sense everybody? Okay, so now I'm going to dig into some code, and we'll take a look at how some of the uh, some of the site was done. It's actually going to start with the attendees scroller on the home page. Okay, so I'm sure all you guys are familiar with that. Um, basically, the way that was built is it's just a view that outputs specific fields um, about the user, and then I wrote some jQuery to wrap around it. I might need that. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm talking about here. Um, this is actually just a view that outputs uh, different fields about the users. And um, it outputs a number, an unlimited number of people. So what I'll do is we'll take a quick look through here and inspect it and just see what's going on from, from this side. And then we'll dig into the code that, that did it. It's a little bit smaller here. Okay, it's not really friendly. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit harder to see because it's not formatted. But essentially, views is outputting view content. Um, and then for each of the rows, it outputs a div wrapper called views row. And uh, then it outputs each of the fields within that, that row. Okay, so that. Like I talked about before, we have a, a display style, which is unformatted. We have uh, the, row the row styles that we can use to output different things for each of the rows. And then we have the field formatters for each of the fields within that row. Um, and this, as you go into the divs, you can see where each of the outputs coming from. Um, so we have views row 1, views row 2, views row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6. You can see there's a lot of rows, and you're not actually seeing those. So it's a little bit of CSS to do some of the hiding, and then some of the jQuery to move around the, the actual DOM op elements, so those results. Um, OK, so let's take a look at some of the templates we created. And to do that, let's, uh, let's go to our views. OK, 
Okay, so this is the attendee view, and you can see that I've actually repurposed the same view for any time you see a list of attendees on the site. Uh, the reason I like to do that is because it keeps everything organized, and um, the way I'm able to do that actually is by defining some, some key defaults to be used across all of the displays. Uh, eventually, all the, a lot of them get overridden because some of the views have different fields or uh, they may need different filters or arguments. But I start out with usually a general uh, base set of filters like I only want to show active users. I want to show only people who are attendees. Uh, and I, you know, people that don't have a user picture, I want to filter out, right? Especially for this one because we want to show their, their, their pictures. Um, and the attendance uh, is a filter. That was something as part of the campsite. We just, uh, when you guys filled out your thing, you, you said what your attendance was going to be. So we kind of filtered out by people who didn't plan on attending. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the, uh, the featured attendees block. Uh, you'll also notice too, I have a naming convention I like to stick with, uh, where I keep the, the display type at the front, and then I give it a semicolon, and then maybe a more descriptive name. So when I'm looking through my view, I know pretty much exactly which display I'm using for each, each part of the site. Um, you can also do some cool stuff here with the admin settings, where you can define uh, what the view name would be like in the blocks administration page. So if you named it featured attendees block, then when you went to your block admin to place the block, you would look for that name. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and click on the theme information. And you can see it outputs a lot of stuff for us. And uh, again, uh, to go over, we have the display output, which let's take a look through that really quick. Um, first of all, it's going to give you all the variable names that are available to you in that template for each of the, view, each of the templates. So it's kind of a starter point. Uh, I'll go through some code. We can debug some of the variables so you guys can walk through those and see how those are going, uh, see what, what's in those va uh, values. And then you go through, and you'll kind of recognize this if you look at the code that your view outputs. But basically, it's the view, the view CSS name, uh, the view ID, um, you know, the header. If there's a header defined, it prints the header. If there are exposed filters defined, it, it, it outputs those. So adding like different HTML elements around any of those uh, those parts of the view is actually really easy. You override the template, and then you add any HTML markup or anything else you want uh, in addition to that. Uh, so now here you see if there's rows returned, then print out the rows. Otherwise, if there's no return, uh, rows returned, it's going to print out what you defined as the empty text. Okay. Um, let's, see. let's go back here. Now let's look through here. Now you'll see that uh, on style output, the first one is bold. That's because that's the template it's using. Up here in the display output, I've actually overridden it. And you'll see that in views view attendees block one, I've actually overridden that display output. OK, so that, that lets you know, OK, your, your actual template file is getting picked up and is being recognized by views to, as the template being used for the theme. So it's really helpful. And uh, it's actually really cool, too, because down here, say you're on your local machine, you added a new template to your, your theme directory you can actually rescan the template files in real time and it'll tell you okay it picked it up or it didn't okay and that's since the the template names are really long sometimes it's actually really helpful so you know that your template file is getting picked up your your code's getting recognized and that that's not the issue uh, if something's going wrong okay so we'll go down the list here uh, display output we have style output uh, style output is unformatted and in this case it's unformatted so all it's doing is uh, printing out each of the rows in their own divs. Okay. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to override this if I'm if I'm floating uh, like photos in a, in a gallery. I'll override this template and add a clear block class to the, the to the wrapper div around all the rows, and that way uh, the floats come up and then they're, it's broken at the bottom so nothing else comes up underneath it. Okay. Good. Yeah. So uh, if you're familiar with like. Actually, Drupal core has a clear dash block as a class, as a CSS class defined. And what it does is it'll clear everything. So if you're floating divs inside of a, an outline div, uh, the th anything below it doesn't creep up underneath. Okay, and that's sort of a, a CSS, not hack, uh, just kind of a, a workaround, I guess, to, to making sure that your, your wrapper div falls all the way below all the content within it. Okay. All right. So now we're going to dig into a row style output. So here, 
it goes through for each of the fields in the row. We have an ID for the field and then the value. And you'll see, um, you'll notice things from the, the admin interface that you guys can you know, fill out like a, a field separator. When you guys choose the, field, uh, the display output, you can choose what field separators you're using. So if there's a field separator, it prints that. Um, it prints a label if you defined a label for the field. Okay, so all these things you can kind of recognize from the admin interface. And um, let's go ahead and jump out of this. I want to kind of get onto some of the code to show you guys uh, the overrides. Um, and here's an example of just a field. And um, pretty easy, just prints output. Okay, so for any of the fields that you want to output, um, it'll actually theme it using the CCK formatters or whatever other formatters are there. But if you want to output things differently, you can just override it and print out whatever you want for that field. Okay, and I have some, some examples that we can use later too. Okay, um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the display output that I used for the attendees block. Please let me know if uh, this text isn't big enough for you guys. Correct. Okay, so the question is if I'm actually making the changes in within the views interface here, or am I making it in a text editor? And the answer is uh, what you'll usually do is you'll take this as the default text, you'll copy it, right? So I'll copy the whole thing, and then I'll take it in the text editor, go to my sites folder, find my theme. And actually, I want to show you this too. Okay, um, and then I add the, the the template file. So you can see here. Let's take a look for the one that we used uh, here. Views dash view dash attendees. So right here, this is the template file I created, and I, I named it exactly what views told me to. Okay, and what we'll do is, you know, I go in there and then I copy and paste what views gave me as a default, and then I add markup and such around that. Okay. Um, so in this particular instance, I, I added JavaScript as well within the view because I only wanted the JavaScript to load whenever this block view is loading. So this is the Drupal add.js function. will do that for you. Um, and I can walk through that later if you guys want to have some jQuery stuff. I don't know if we'll get to it. Um, but essentially what I needed to do was override the way that the entire view content was output um, to define some extra classes around around the actual code. Sorry. Okay, so to define some extra classes around the content that I could use uh, in the jQuery, and I also needed to provide previous and next links uh, so that you guys could click previous and next. Um, and uh, I could have done that, I could have added that stuff through jQuery, but I figured it would be better to have it in there if JavaScript was enabled, it wouldn't really work, but at least the, the style of the, the display wouldn't be all messed up. Um, so let's look at the default, and then I can show you what I changed. So if you go through here, um, this, is the unf this is just the view display style. It shows me right here if rows, print out the rows. Um, I'm basically, I, I kind of stripped out a lot of it, and I'm just printing out the rows in my own div classes, my own div tags. Okay, and then I've added my own markup uh, for previous and next. So, let me... Okay, so I have my div class uh, scrollable, which is right here. Okay, then I have um, my previous and next tags are after it. And that's outside of the, the content that the views displays. Okay, um, another way to do it, I guess, would have been using a views footer to add that content below. Um, but I just went ahead and did it here because all my, J my J JavaScript was in there already and I, I was just 
theming with this one template. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, let me show you guys another template that was overridden. Um, okay, so here's another template that I overrode, and this was specific to the picture field. Okay, so what I, what I wanted to do is, you can see that there's a black and white photo, and then there's a regular photo. So I actually output two different fields and hide one using CSS. So then when I get to the front of the row, I show the one that's actually the color photo, and when it's not in the front of the row, I show the one that's the black and white photo. Okay, um, and it's kind of, I think you can use the views profile, uh, what's it called? Uh, image cache profile, I think is the module, but um, I was just going through and doing it, so I, I overrode the way that the picture um, fields output, because if you see up here, it doesn't give me an option to, to throw the picture through image cache for, for user photos. Okay, so it just gives me the normal exclude from display, rewrite the output of the field, output this field as a link. So what I had to do is actually find that, that field and run it through image cache, so that way the image came out through the filters that I wanted. Okay. Can you rearrange the path? Um, okay. So the question was if I rearrange the path to, to throw it through image cache, and uh, the question or the answer is no. I um, I guess I did, but what image cache provides is its own theme function called theme image cache. So I actually just output the path of the image and put it through the theme image cache function, and it outputs it back through there. Uh, so it actually writes the image uh, destination for me. Can you show that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so I, I have two instances, right? And the only reason I have two um, is because I wanted one in black and white and one in color. So I had two different cases. So this one you'll see is if I go back in the, um, the theme information, you're going to see it'll list for me all of the fields that I have for this particular display. Okay, so I have the UID. I have the, the full name of the user, the tagline of the user, which is the little logo, like slogan below them. I have a picture and another picture. And the one important thing to note here is the ID that it tells you. And that's going to tell me what, uh, what, what key it is within the, the views variables. And we'll, I'll, I'll do an example on that. But uh, use that ID as a way to print out the specific value you're looking for. Um, it's it's kind of helpful. So I'll show you block one picture. And then I'll show you block one, picture two, afterwards, OK? OK, so in this template, remember before the field outputs, the field templates were just simply print output. And in this case, it just printed the, the normal look of the, the, the user picture. And what I've actually gone ahead and done is uh, generate a, a file path to the user's picture, which can be found in uh, this row. Let's actually let's, let's debug this so we can see. Um, the DSM function is something that comes as part of the Devel module. And what it does is it'll print out that variable, but it'll actually print it in a header and give me a, a browser window that I can actually step through the variable if it's like an array or an object. And it makes it really easy for debugging. So let's take a look at what's going on with the row because we're using the row values here and, and sort of generating that file path. Okay. So um, and you also notice here, views tells me I have the view object available. I have a field object. I have a row object, which is what we're going to debug now and then an output variable, which is the process output that will normally be used. So it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of commenting. So let's go to the front page. Oh, actually, the front page doesn't put out messages. Hold on. I'm going to use a different function. This is a PHP function called varidump, and it'll, it'll format the variable for me and output it um, in a way that's easy to read. And then the die function will just kill Drupal, so it's just going to print out one result, and it'll just put on a white screen for us, so it's easy to see.
make sure I'm in the right template too. Field attendees. Oh, not in the right template. So this is an instance where I'm not even in the right template. Go figure. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay, sorry. So uh, attendees, block one, picture two, and picture. Okay, sorry. So if you get frustrated and you're not seeing anything print out, then check your template names. <laughs> okay, cool. So now what it's done is for every result that's being returned, it's gonna every time it tries to output that specific field in each of the results, it's gonna print us out that row row object for us to look at. And what's cool about this is you actually have access to the raw data that Views is using to output these views. So if you need access to like the node IDs to write links, or you need access to basically anything um, that Views has going on, you can you can dig through and find it. Uh, so the row variable is a class which means use the, the accessor, which is the dash and the arrow, to access anything below it. Uh, that's different from an array, and that's important to understand. Uh, arrays are accessed through the brackets and then uh, through that, that format. So right here you can see this row, I have access to the user ID, the profile value, the full name, the tagline value, the user's picture, the user's name. Okay. So what I'm going to do is use the user's picture path to pass it through theme image cache. Okay. So what what normally happens in, in this field is it'll actually run a formatter through, uh, like the user module provides a, a formatter for views to use, and it'll run it through that by default. But what we're doing is like bypassing that and running the raw values through our own functions, basically. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, what we did. So I, what I did here, just because sometimes some people don't upload their user pictures, and even though I put a filter so that we're filtering by users who have it just as a backup, I'm basically saying, uh, give me, let's let's find the file path for the user's photo. Um, if the user's picture value is available, so row user's picture, okay. If that's available to us, let's use that. And if it's not, let's use uh, the variable that's been defined in the user settings. Uh, as the user's default photo. Okay, so you can actually find that in the admin of Drupal. Right here. So this is the default picture that gets defined and it gets stored in, in a variable in Drupal using variable set and variable get. Okay, if you're not familiar with those functions, definitely check it out. Uh, go to the api.drupal.org and type in those function names. And you guys will be able to get some documentation on, on what exactly is going on there. Um, so now that we have the file path to the image, uh, I use theme image cache. And I tell it which, which particular image cache um, uh, formatter, I guess, or a preset. I think it's called presets. I'm telling it what preset I want to use. And then I'm giving it the path to the image that I want it to theme. Okay, so all this is sort of a manual override to the way that Views is outputting that specific field. Okay, uh, then the other thing I'm doing here is I'm, I'm putting that as the content inside of a link. Okay, and this is, if, if you're unfamiliar with the L function, again, go to api.drupal.org, check it out. That's how all of the, everything, basically anytime you output a link in Drupal, you should be using the L function because it'll rewrite the path using the URL alias if you have one defined. Okay, it'll always keep it up to date with that. Um, and then I'm giving it the path I wanted to send the person to, so I want, if they click on the user's photo, I want to take them to the user's page. Okay, and then I'm making array, I'm setting HTML to true so that the link function doesn't escape any of the content within the output. If we said, if we didn't have this part here, the image wouldn't actually show up because it would escape the image tag within the A tag. Okay. Um, are there any questions so far? Uh, am I going too quick? Uh, should I go over? Good. Yeah. Okay. So the, the uh, sorry, I cut you off. Is there a reason why? Is that the yeah. okay? Uh, the question was why I would use uh, var dump uh, as opposed to DSM. Uh, var underscore dump is a PHP function, and um, if you don't have the develop module installed, that's a good way to debug your variables. Uh, it prints out 
if the variable is defined, if it's null, if it's false, it'll actually format it so that you can see, just like, just like this outputter did right here, um, so you can kind of dig into it. It doesn't give you like the JavaScript niceness, but it formats in a way that's more easy for you to read so you can see the structure of the variable that's being output. So you can't use DSM the Exactly, yeah, you can't use DSM, that DSM function, without the devel module. Okay, um, any other questions? Go ahead. Yes, so the featured speaker is an image cache preset, and let me show you real quick. Um, so I went to image cache, and here's all the presets that we used. Find that sometimes we create some and we actually don't end up using them. But um, yeah, so we're using featured speaker, and you'll see I have featured speaker underscore thin, which is used for the picture two to provide the uh, black and white image. And uh, actually, I'll click into that. You can see that I'm running a scale to scale the height, and then I'm cropping on the width. So this, this keeps it to, uh, if most of the faces are in the center, it cropped around the center of it. Okay, and then I'm running a desaturate filter to pull out the black and white on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the other one. It's actually the same exact thing, except for I'm outputting uh, through a different image cache preset. But for sake of showing an example, let's take a look. So picture dash two. You notice I'm using the most specific way to access those fields. Okay, I'm actually saying only override the picture field in the attendees view and in this particular display. Okay, um, and that, that is important and I can go over that right after we go over this. So again, we see we build the file path based on the row variables and we run it through image cache. But this time, when, when I'm outputting, I'm not actually outputting it through the L function because in my JavaScript, I wanted to make it so when I click on someone's face, it takes them to that person in the front as, a, as the featured. And so let's take a look at the actual um, implementation there. So here you can see when I click here, I didn't want to go to the user's profile page, but when I click here, I want them to do that. Okay. Um, so then, let's see. Okay. I think that's kind of good for this one. Um, do you guys have any questions about the featured speaker stuff besides the JavaScript stuff at all? Um, otherwise, I'm going to go through another view and uh, show you some of the templates from that. Any questions? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, take a look at, I don't think it, let's see, let's see. let's Okay. So notice actually I have a lot of picture overrides for the attendees so that I can theme different image cache versions. Uh, I'll just show a really quick one. Uh, down here in the bottom left, I have a block that shows all the attendees. Um, for this one, uh, I go in here, it's the block random attendees, which is a different display ID. And I go to theme information, and I can see that I've overridden the picture template to be that. Okay. Now, what I said earlier about how specific I was, uh, if I had written, if I had made my template simply, um, let's see, this one right here. <laughs> views dash view dash field attendees block dash picture that would have overrode any of the blocks for that view uh, the, f the picture field for any of the blocks in that view so I overrode the specific uh, instance of the block because on the bottom left I wanted my mini image cache whereas in the other ones I wanted to use di different image cache outputs okay so does that make sense of, of why we're getting more specific um, and actually, even if I had a, uh, a, a template defined using that, using that name right there, uh, if I had one named this as well, this would have precedence over the other one. So I could still define uh, a default image cache run through for any of the instances of the, the picture output, um, and still for the specific one have a more, more, uh, more specific uh, case. Go ahead. When you, when you click on the, uh, 
Okay. Right. It's going to show you whatever is seen by Drupal as the, as the active one? Uh, a good question. So when I click on this orange link, it'll show me the default instance. What, what basically, this, this will show me what views defines as the default. Okay, so if you go and create your own and you output a ton of stuff and do whatever, you can always go back here and find the default one. Uh, another important thing to know, you actually have all these template files in your views directory. So you can actually just copy the file from there and put it in your own template, in your own theme, um, and do it that way. But this is kind of easy. I just click it, copy it, paste it in. It's, it's easy. Right, okay, good question. So uh, he's asking how it works with multi-site. Um, the way it works with multi-site is when you create your theme, whatever site uses that theme, it'll look for the templates in that theme folder. So you're not actually override, you're not actually going into your views template and, and changing that. You would copy that template and put it in your theme directory. Okay, and that way in your theme directory, um, say one site uses one theme and another site uses another theme, you can actually, they're actually different. It's, it's looking up off the theme directory, not af off of your views core. It's actually not recommended at all that you, you modify the views template in the views module itself. Uh, that's actually the whole reason why they have the template system and the override system where uh, the theme takes precedence over the module on any of the template files because the theme is always the most specific thing. The, the modules are supposed to, to provide you with a reasonable default and when you want to build your site, you always override those to be more specific to your particular uh, instance, your, your actual website. Does that answer the question well? Okay. Go ahead. Right. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the question is, if, if I do a rescan theme, the template files down here, do I need to still clear my cache? Uh, so you, you shouldn't have to because it just refreshed the, the cache system for the theming to know where the template files are. But if it doesn't work, just clear your cache anyways. Um, and that's sort of a general templating thing. Whenever you add new templates to your theme directory, you need to clear your Drupal cache, which is another reason why you have the Devel module. Um, because uh, you can actually, using Devel and admin menu, you can click on flush all caches. It's pretty easy. Yeah, when, when uh, the question is if I see it bold-faced, if, if that makes me happy, and yes, it does, because it means I've named it correctly. Uh, not necessarily that Drupal, Drupal may have still cached it. It's kind of, maybe kind of picky sometimes for you, depending. Still clear the cache, but at least you know that the template file's there, your code's getting recognized, and, and things are going to happen for you. Um, any other questions? Okay. So let's... Let's actually show an example where I'm going to remove the, uh, the template file or rename it. Okay, so let's find this template file, the attendees block 2. And right here, I'm going to rename that file. Okay, and I'm going to rescan the template files. And you can see it has a fallback. So it actually changed for us, okay? And, okay, I think that's good for that. Let's close that. Okay, so if you guys want to get really tricky, um, I'll show you how I did the schedule. And, okay, cool, so we're still getting a dump on something. here. So I think back here where I did the ver dump, it is actually a template file for another view. Yeah, let's hope it is. <laughs> okay, so that that this right here is getting picked up, uh, some for some reason. Uh, probably in another view that's shown on a block. Uh, so I'll clear that out. Okay, so in the schedule, uh, what I did is I did override, and I actually outputted this using the the Drupal uh, theme table function. And uh, I can do a quick walkthrough on that. How many people are familiar with the theme table uh, function in Drupal? Okay, let's go over that really quick because I think it's important to know before we go through this. 
Um, again, uh, I'm going to go to api.drupal.org because it's one of the theme functions defined by Drupal Core. Um, how many people have not seen this page before? Okay, so still a good amount of you. Uh, it's really worth going through sometime in the next week or two if you're doing Drupal work. Uh, read through all these all these things here, components, example modules, um, mostly to the in-depth discussions about uh, Forms API and, and understanding that stuff. Um, there's definitely a theme system. Kind of gives you a whole like introduction to how the theme system works, why it is why it works the way it does, how you can use it, etc. Okay, it's really helpful. So I'm going to take a look specifically at the function that we're needing, just theme underscore table. Okay, and what it does for us is we can build a, a variable uh, which is an array of rows, and each uh, each row is an array of fields to display in the template. So we're actually creating a grid array. A uh, two by two array, and um, putting that in for the rows of the table, and it goes through loops through each one, wraps tr td tags, and uh, gives us an actual table output. Okay, so it's really helpful if you're doing a bunch of stuff uh, with data and code, and you want to output a table because you don't have to actually do the HTML formatting yourself. The other cool thing is if instead of having to do it on your own in your in your module, you can then override this theme function in your temp in your in your themes directory and maybe add classes to all the tables across all the sites or do um, stuff like that. So what this function expects is a header row which is an array of each of the columns. So column one, column two, column three, uh, you define uh, each of the column titles. Then you give it a two by two array of rows and you can define any other attributes like classes or whatever you want to put on your, your table. So let's go ahead and look at the, the actual template that we used. Schedule. Okay, so let's go into the admin and let's take a look at the themes uh, available to us, the theme functions. Okay, so we only have two pages. One is actually for the site admins, and in this instance, we actually show the attend the the flag count so that they can see, oh, we have X number of people signed up for this this room and X number of people signed up in this room and they can actually see it in the schedule so that if they need to adjust things, they can move those around. Um, and you can see we have accesses only to administrators. So, uh, But the cool thing is, is it uses the same template because it gives it the same output. So I didn't have to write that twice. I just, I just added new fields to the output. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the page. Let's look at theme information. And you can see right away, I, I chose to override the style output because, um, well, you'll see. So there's two, two different things I overrode. One was the style output and one was the row style output. And I didn't touch any of the fields because we didn't need to. Okay. So let's go look at the style output, which is unformatted schedule page.tpl.php, which is okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. But I want to show you, I want to step through some of the variables with you guys so you guys can see what you guys can do with some creativity uh, on your own. So let's look at the default for this. The default for us on the style output, it just basically says if there's a title, print out the title, which um, I don't know if any of you have used it, but that essentially comes into play when you're uh, using a grouping field. So if you group by a particular field uh, that that will show up as the title that field value um, but it's usually not really often used at all so uh, and then it basically goes through each of the rows that are returned and then it prints out each of the rows okay so that's really basic it actually doesn't really do much besides give us some div tags around it and, and that's about it well what I did instead was I went in here and I did a DSM on the rows variable and just to see what I would have access to. What kind of data do I have available to me in this template file for output? Okay. So let's go ahead and reload the schedule. And it's only going to show us one. Okay. It's gonna, we printed out once. And that's because that template file only got called once. P previously, we sh it loaded probably 15 or 20 different times. That's because it was loading for every, every row that was returned. So you can see that this template file gets, gets called once. And then it calls all the sub-template files below when it outputs the row output. Okay, 
Um, so let's look at the array. We have 74 sessions that are returned in this result set. Okay, and then it gives me an array of each of them, which then I can loop over. And each of each of the values is actually the formatted value from views. So it doesn't really give me anything to work with in terms of like before you saw how I had access to like the picture and I could actually change the way the output was for that specific field. It doesn't actually give me that here. So what I actually had to do was go through and loop through all the rows and use the ID, which was the array key here, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And actually there's another, va another variable available to us called view result, which works off the same keys. So you can go through all of the IDs and I'll, I'll actually DSM that for us as well. But basically what I'm doing is going through for each of the results, I'm actually building a new array that I'm going to pass back through that theme table function. So I can go through some of this, but I'll show you the view thing first. Okay. So the view variable is available pretty much in all the templates from views. And it's actually the view object that uh, stores all of the information about the view. Okay, and you can, you can walk through this for days and figure out what's going on. It's probably one of the most complicated, complex uh, modules that you have going on, but it's actually quite beautiful how it's designed. Um, okay, so we have a number of values. You'll see that uh, the VID is the view ID. Uh, you have the view description, if it's cacheable, um, an array of displays, the default, the page one, the page two. So you have access to basically everything that the views module knows about this particular view. And what we're doing is we're going through the result array, which again, now you'll see I have an array of 74 elements, which matches up directly to our rows, 74 elements, okay? And then I also have the same keys for the same data. Only this time, the data is the raw data and not the formatted data by CCK, okay? Uh, do I have any questions moving forward? I, I know I'm kind of moving quick through things and maybe skipping over something. Go ahead. Uh, what were you looking at? Oh, okay, so that, that the code that I was looking at, uh, api.drupal.org, was the, the table theming function. And uh, I just wanted to show you that because we use that function to output a table because the schedule is actually output in an HTML table with that markup. So without even writing any table tags or TR tags or TDs or having to write loops to go over any of this data to output my own table, all I do is I build an array with all the data, I pass it into the theme table function, and it'll go through all, the, all that stuff for me and output the formatted HTML output. The other cool thing is uh, you also notice that um, the table header slides down with, you, with us. And that's part of Drupal 6 core. If you use the theme table function, it gives that to you by default. So I didn't have to do anything for that. It was really helpful. Maybe a little bit of styling, add some CSS classes to it and such, but that's about it. Question? Okay. So the question is how we group it into rooms, and we'll go over that right now, unless there's any other questions. Go ahead. Right. Okay, so she asked, instead of using the table theming, like I'm going to do here, I could have used the grid output. Um, in any other circumstance, for photo galleries, for um, anything like that, usually yes. But the, the issue here was you needed to have things separated by room to fall into that particular column. So I needed a way to, to basically sort through all the data, figure out which things were, were in which rooms and at which times, and then output a, a format of things. So like you'll see there's gaps. If we had used the grid output, it would basically just scroll everything up and wrap up and there'd be no sort of uh, standard uh, structure to it. Uh, okay, so what we did to do this was, let's look at the, let's see. okay, so let's look at the fields available to us. You'll notice that I'm selecting the title of the node of each of the sessions, the day, the, the room, and the time. Okay, and that's really important that we're, we're selecting those because those actually end up showing up in our view results, and that's how I can build the array which uh, sorts and organizes each of the thing by room, day, and time, okay? So here, you can see that I'm building a new array called results. And the keys of the array 
are the session day, the session time, and then the session room. Okay, so this is actually a three by three array because I have the session day at the first part of it, but for each day I'm outputting a different table. So basically I have that array, which is the, the times. For all the times, I have all the times, and then for each of the times I have an additional value for each of the rooms. So it may be empty or may, there may be a, a value in there, okay? Um, and let's go through, because this is a lot of code right here, even just this one bit. Um, let's go through. I'm, I'm looking into the view variable, which remember we output it right here, okay? And then I'm stepping in. I'm saying, okay, I want to, I want to look at the result with the, the the key of the same key from this row that I'm looping through, okay? And then I want to look at this particular field that's being output, okay? So let's take a look through there. Okay, so I have I have the result. So here's the view object, right? I have a result array. I have a key of zero, which is actually a class. And then I have all the raw data. So here you'll see I have, I think we're looking for session day value, right? So node data, field session day, field session day value. It's really verbose and that's like how CCK outputs all of its things so that it can be unique and you can find out specifically which one you're looking for. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, uh, the question would be if it's Saturday and Sunday, and yeah, basically for this, since we only had two options in the CCK fields as Saturday and Sunday, those are the only two values that could actually be. So if you're doing a camp where you have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all you have to do is change the CCK implementation to have those different values available, and then you can build out a different table for each of those, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. We're looking at the session day value. In this particular instance, there's, there's no day set to this. So that means that this is not going to show up on the schedule because we didn't put it in the array. It's, it's null. OK, so let's look at another one. Uh, another one that's null because it didn't happen. OK, here we go. So the views demystified was yesterday. Obviously, it was Saturday. OK, and then you can see here we have the day field which is, or sorry, the, the time field, which is 1430, which is a military time. And the reason I did that was so that, uh, you know, 930 in the morning didn't come after 730 at night. Okay, so that was actually defined when I did my CCK node, node types. I actually defined, it, defined the keys for the CCK fields so that we'd have, you know, um, time formats that would sort uh, numerically like that, okay? And uh, then I have the room value. Again, I used, um, we used keys for the room values instead of just typing in the room name as the name of the room and the CCK options. I actually assigned a value to it because if the room name changed later, then those keys didn't change. Okay, and that's, that's kind of important. Um, just sort of the, those kind of things when you're thinking about building stuff uh, really help when you're at the theme level after you've already done all the site building because those have already been taken care of. So using stand, good standards like that is uh, very helpful. Um, so what we end up with now here, uh, after we've gone through all the results, let's take a look at what, what, do we, what do we end up with. Obviously, we have an array, but let's take a look at what we have. Um, and it's actually 11. I'm going to go over this. I have this, this room for the next session afterwards, too, so I'm going to go over by about five minutes. Uh, the next session is on hooks and, and Drupal modules. Okay. So let's go through this really quick to see what we're getting. And what we're getting is an array, Saturday and Sunday. On Sunday, we have all the time slots. And then we have all the rooms, which then we can pass back out through theme table. OK? So I know this, I kind of dove in pretty, uh, pretty quick on a lot of you guys. But I, I'm hoping I showed a lot of the basics so you guys can go through the, the views template functions. Uh, mess around on your own and sort of explore the variables that are available to you using the develop module um, to hopefully, you know, make your views rock. Um, actually, no, I'm not filling any. Uh, I'm not filling in any of the holes in the table because uh, if there's no value, it prints null, and so the table just has a null value within that particular column. 
And that's, that's helpful from theme table. It does that for us. So if there's not a, a value defined, this code's going to be released uh, this week with the updated package of the camp website. So you can actually walk through this template file on your own. Uh, you can debug all of it. You can check out what's going on. Uh, I think this would serve as a really great example if you wanted to challenge yourself uh, and really figure out what's going on with PHP and the arrays and all the data structures, okay? Uh, I'll take questions. Were you going to release it at uh, this by them site? Or were you it'll actually be posted on the camp site. Yeah, it'll, there's, a, a, there's actually a write-up already there. There is a release of the code, but it didn't include any of the scheduling because we didn't do that until afterwards. But that'll be updated and it'll be released as well. Can you be sure to export the Yes. Oh, and the, 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 the camp site will include the database, so you'll have all the views in there already as well. So everything will be working. You just won't have any of the graphics from the camp site. Uh, we didn't want to release that because... We wanted the campsite to be unique, and we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to, you know, anyone who's using it to be creative and kind of create their own theme for it. But uh, we did include a base theme with, you know, base setup so that you guys have all the template files already in there for you and all the blank CSS so you guys can kind of go from there. Uh, and actually, Mike is going to be releasing a theme that he created off it as a simple example, um, which is actually really generous of him to do that. So you have two examples then to work with. Any other questions? Great. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I have cards up here if you guys need my email address or anything. Uh, feel free to take some. Uh, get in contact with me about anything. You have questions. I'm always happy to help out with things. So, thank you. For the next session.